What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is Denise Salcedo with Instinct Culture, and I am very excited to introduce to you my guest for today. He is none other than X Division Champion, Impact Wrestling's very own Ace Austin. What's up, Ace? How's it going? It's Friday, it's Friday you know? I'm ready to, to go towards the weekend of wrestling. Oh. Exactly. Exactly. Now, Ace, here's the things that why I was really excited to chat with you here today is because you have had an amazing last two years. You've really been doing a lot. You've had a lot of success in Impact Wrestling. Kind of give us a little breakdown on your thoughts on everything that has happened in the last two years. How you feel about it all? Well, I, I, yeah, I've only been with Impact for two years. So uh, to say that there was no, you know, lull period, there was no like, coming into the company, getting used to things, you know, there was no, none of that. I showed up, uh, how old was that, 20, 21? Yeah. Um, and then I was undefeated for four months. TJP came in, you know, wiped that out. And then I went on from there to the X Division title at Bound for Glory, which was an unbelievable moment atop the ladder in Chicago. Oh, and then uh, right from there into the main event stuff with the world champ when uh, Tessa was champ. So we did that. Yeah, then I went into the stuff with Willie for Rebellion and then back into the world title picture. Uh, main event at Slammiversary, which was huge and um, unforgettable for sure. Tag title stuff right after that, me and Fulton. Uh, and then we came back around full circle. X Division champ once again. We were at the next launching point for my career. And uh, big things are coming. You know, it's very excited to see, like, just like everything that you have been able to do. So I kind of want to get your thoughts on this, because, again, we you have been able to do a lot in such a short amount of time. So given when you first signed with Impact Wrestling, what were your expectations and how would you say they have changed or evolved since then? I would definitely say, well, I mean, you know, I totally expected that, that lull period that I talked about, you know, I, I totally expected to come in as young as I was and inexperienced as I was uh, and just have to learn for a while, pretty much. You know, I thought it was just going to be a real baseline, you know, let's figure out what you're capable of first and then we'll go from there. But I think that they quickly saw what I was capable of. Um, and they had been scouting me previously, so they they kind of knew what I had uh, what I had ready to go. Um, so it was really just a refining process. I think it was just like them just smoothing out the clay uh, that was Ace Austin. Um, and uh, yeah, so like it was pretty mind blowing to like I mean just the whole experience was amazing. The whole like doing TV at all, especially in front of crowds back then. Uh, my first set of TV was in Vegas and that was my first time in Vegas. So like that whole experience was amazing. Just being in Vegas and the crowd was amazing and uh, seeing all of that for the first time was awesome. Yeah. Uh, coming, coming from just like, you know, doing independent stuff, whatever. And then 2018, I had a pretty big year with some big opportunities all across the board. And then finally signing at the end of 2018 and then choosing impact to start with. Um, yeah, coming in and, and learning how to, you know, do all the, the fun TV stuff. It's so different and it really changed. I mean, it, it's it had to change who I was as a wrestler. I had to, it was time to evolve. Uh, so I did. And, um, yeah, I spent the first eight months of my career with impact, just kind of like really, uh, just chipping away at, at any of the holes that I might've had, you know? just like that refining process I, that I was talking about. Just that's what the first eight months was. It was just like, how do we, you know, just smooth out the edges here. And then it was like X division title uh, at Bound for Glory. And then from there, it was really like, I, I know, I know what I'm, what I'm real good at now. So <laughs> I, can, I like that. I like that. Cause you're like, you can feel the confidence and you talk about this refining process and things that you had to smooth out. And obviously, you know, going to TV and learning how to work, you know, for a TV audience is also very different. So for you, would you say that there's anybody or maybe, uh, you know, any 
thing that you were particularly doing or somebody was saying to you that really just helped you put everything in line, everything in focus to really, again, refine the things that you were working on? Well, I definitely, so like one, one of the major reasons that I chose Impact to start with uh, was because I had so many, uh, you know, peers and mentors that I was familiar with in the locker room already, like people that I had been uh, working with or under uh, previously were, were in that locker room. So uh, that was a huge factor in deciding to go there because I, I wanted to continue, you know, they had helped me so much so far. Uh, I wanted to continue kind of sitting under these learning trees. Um, but even before impact, like it, it, even before that, I, uh, I spent a lot of time with like Sammy Callahan. Um, I, I lived with him for a while. And uh, so he was a huge, huge mentor for me. So he kind of got me ready, especially mentally, for like all of that way ahead of time. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of like just him, especially because of all the experience that he has, not just with impact, like all across the board. Uh, he really had a lot of great insight into how to, uh, you know, approach things, how to handle myself, how to carry myself, how to dress, you know, how to how to talk, who to talk to, you know, the, the, just like so many little nuances to the kind of behind the scenes stuff. Um, like little what? things that you don't, that you don't even know that no, those things that people don't always tell you and you always end up having to learn on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Just those, like just those little mistakes that you, that you don't think about. And then you kind of fought, you, you know, you learn those lessons hard, but he, he really prepared me for a lot of stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and he helped me build relationships with like, you know, the people at impact before I got there. So, uh, so it, it all just really lined up, you know, great. And then, um, showing up and, and getting to work with absolute top tier guys like right away, you know, was amazing. I worked with Petey Williams. Like I was like the first, like one of the first things I did with impact was working with Petey. So that was like, you know, how can you not learn from that? Exactly, exactly. So now here's what I want to ask you, because you're obviously in your second reign as X Division champion. And now being that the fact that the X Division in Impact Wrestling has such a vast history and obviously very big names, you know, AJ Styles there, you know, there's just so many different people, Chris Sabin, that you can think of that have held this title and that have made it something. So for you, what does it mean to sort of be, you know, the face of the X Division when it comes with so much history? The first time it was like, the whole experience itself was like so just mind blowing that the legacy of the title was something that like, doesn't didn't even creep into my mind until after the fact just because like i've always loved you know ladder matches growing up as a kid so being able to do bound for glory in chicago in that ladder match and and, and grabbing the exhibition title up there was like just a a moment i i wasn't sure i mean especially i wasn't sure if i would have that moment anytime soon that's for sure especially so young so um i've always said that i feel like i'm i'm still too young to really appreciate all of the things that I you know, get to do right now uh, and that I get to have. Um, so, you know, I'm sure that I will. But, um, At yeah. least you're aware of it, though, don't you think? Like, some people don't even realize it until afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you got to be self-aware. Um, but uh, AJ Styles is one of those guys that I have, like, I want to model my career after. I think he did everything, like, the, the way that you totally should. Like, if you love professional wrestling uh, and – the experiences that, 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 you know, are out there, you really have to go for. So, um, yeah, looking at this, this history now, uh, especially coming around to the second title reign, like the first one meant so much to me, you know, personally, and, and I was just doing my best and I ended up doing really well. I had, I had a really good run. Uh, people remembered it and it was, uh, it was pretty lengthy. Um, so, Coming around to it this time, I like almost knew like because I didn't really know what I was getting into the first time. Now it's like I remember what it was like, and I, and I wanted it again. So having it again is like you know now I get to really just kind of like it, like drill it home. I, I I was confident the first time, and now like I know that I that I got this. 
Um, yeah, and I think that, you know, obviously within your second reign, you can see those little, you know, tweaks and differences, obviously, from the first. So, you know, within yourself, you're seeing that growth. And, you know, some of the impact talent that I have talked to before, you know, when I talk to people about, like, who are some of the people that you like? Who are the, some of the people that you're a fan of? A lot of those people always mention you. And that's really great because you want to be that person that people are talking about. And we are seeing that. So now I kind of want to switch over and talk about Madman Fulton because you have been able to, you know, I think he has really helped along with the pairing has helped your character development and all of that. So I kind of want to get your thoughts on the pairing with him and also what your initial reaction was when you found out that you guys would sort of be doing this, you know, like HBK diesel type of situation. Yeah. So uh, I would say the only thing I really didn't get, you know, a lot of experience with, uh, on my way up to the Indies and everything would, would be tag team, you know, wrestling. I did very little to no tag team wrestling at all. Um, so, and I never saw myself really doing tag stuff. Um, but it's kind of inevitable <laughs> in, a, right, in a, right. a lengthy career. Um, uh, so coming through the uh, Madman Fulton is just like, I mean, without a doubt, he is the largest person on the impact roster just the biggest human being one one of the just biggest people i've ever you know seen so that alone and, and like seeing his dynamic with sammy and how you know almost controlling and like they literally like brainwashed him like the like ove literally brainwashed madman fulton you know and he, he was just like an animal at their disposal so when i saw the uh opportunity to kind of bring madman fulton into into my fold um i really wanted to change that dynamic completely i wanted to uh, i i knew it was going to be a new side of me but i i wanted to make sure that people got to see a new side of, of fulton really because um because i'm i i didn't uh, you know ask him to join me uh on this crusade so that i could control him you know i asked him because he can obviously do he's a good friend to have you know and there's no reason i don't need to tell him what to do he can handle that himself he he definitely he has a mind of his own right so i wanted to make sure people understood that you know that, that that's like you know, he's, he's just looking out for me because I asked him to and because I'm taking good care of him um, uh, as far as uh, as far as it goes inside of the uh, inside of the bubble. Uh, and. Um, yeah, so so going straight from the world title stuff right into that with Fulton, um, I feel like a lot of my career has been like learning under pressure. And I feel like that's like a better way for me to learn in a lot of cases uh, is kind of just to be put in those moments and it's, uh, you know, sink or swim. Uh, so that was kind of the same thing with the tag, the tag team stuff. I, me and Fulton went right in there with the good brothers, like off the rip. So it was like the, some of the best tag teams in the world, good brothers, the North, uh, the motor city machine guns. We went right into that program with them. So how can you not, you know, become really good at something. When you're working with the best. When you're working with the best, there's, there's no, like there was no buffer period of us, like of us just like figuring out how to be a tag team against random other people. It was like, we're in there with the best. So we have to bring our best if we want to hang. Um, exactly. Yeah. And then we, and, and I think it's a, ch a testament to both of our talent and abilities because we made it all the way to bound for glory uh, in the tag title picture and still, you know, almost had it amazing so now before i jump into our last and final rat lightning rounds game i do have one more question for you R april 25th rebellion you have a three-way you're defending the x division title against tjp and josh alexander kind of give me your thoughts on those two guys and what we can expect from this match well i mean tjp was that was that obstacle that i didn't overcome you know at the beginning of my career right but uh i finally did that that sacrifice um, so I, TJP, I don't think he has, uh, he doesn't have that edge on me that he thinks, that he thinks he has still, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm ready for him. Josh Alexander on the other hand is like, 
pretty unpredictable in the way of just brute force. Like you don't, I don't really know how much it's going to take to totally bring Josh Alexander down, you know, but I don't necessarily need to because there's EJP in the match. So I just have to exploit, you know, one of them at the right moment. And, uh, you know, it's all me. If you ask, you know, Petey Williams to, 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 to do his Steiner math again, he'll tell you that the odds are not in my favor. Right. But that's the thing about my whole career. The odds never had to be in my favor because I've always got that ace on my sleeve. You know, I make my own luck when it comes to these situations. I don't leave anything up to chance. That's I, I love that. I love the strategy, a strategy going into this, and I cannot wait for that match at Rebellion. So now, Ace, we're going to go ahead and move on to our final portion of the interview. I'm going to ask you 10 very fast questions. You answer them as fast as you can. This is our lightning round, a great way to get to learn to learn more about you. So here we go. Are you ready? Question number one. Do you have any pre-match rituals? Uh, yes, actually. I um, Besides, you know, resistance bands, jump ropes, whatever, uh, I write two different numbers on the inside of my wrist tape. Uh, on the inside of my left wrist, I write 576, which is just a number that means a lot to me. And on the inside of this wrist, I write my match number every time. So oh, the, like the match that you're on, like in your yeah, career? I've had 640 matches as of last weekend. I so, love that. So you're doing the Jericho thing where you're like keeping track of all your matches. Yeah, yeah. Not only do I have the numbers written on my wrist tape, but I also have the book. I have a little book that I keep in my bag and I've written all of them down since. Yes. That is so cool. I love that. You know, usually when I ask this question, I don't get interesting answers. This is a very interesting answer. I love this. That is really, really cool. Uh, question number two, who have been some of your favorite opponents? Rich Swan, uh, which is a match that Impact Wrestling hasn't been able to have the, uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? The good fortune to see yet. Um, haven't been lucky enough to see yet, but they will uh, inevitably. Uh, me and Swan have tangled uh, on the indies and at MLW, and it's been incredible every time. And he's just one of my favorite people in general. So definitely uh, Swan, uh, Chris Bay is just like a lot of fun to work with, of course. Um, ah, man, Eddie Edwards, right? Lots of great talent, man. Tommy Dreamer, Lots Tommy talent. Dreamer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question number three: Dream City, you'd like to wrestle in? Let's see. I've wrestled in 26 states so far. So where somewhere I haven't been yet? Uh, Alaska. Yeah. Alaska. I know that I know that wrestle a company called Wrestle Pro. They do indie shows in Alaska, and I really want to get on one of those sometime. I think that'd be an interesting experience for sure. Alaska. I think so too. Question number four: Skateboard trick that was the hardest to learn. 360 flip. I, I like my, my best friend Dominic was so good at it. He just could nail those all day. 360 flip or tray flip, they're also called. Um, and I, like, struggled so hard. I've only landed, like, four, you know, like, ever. <laughs> Question number five, who's your biggest inspiration? Talent-wise, you know, personality. I, I got to say uh, Jeff Hardy, probably my favorite wrestler ever. Uh, but inspiration, maybe more so AJ Styles, I, I think, inspiration-wise. Because he changed my goals. He changed – what I wanted to do in wrestling. When I first started training, I just wanted to wrestle. I just wanted to be in the WWE, right? That's, that's the only thing I knew I, I thought about. And then like seeing somebody like AJ Styles and the way that he did it and progressed and that really changed the way that I wanted to do it. So. Showed the world of possibilities. Exactly. Yeah. Question number six, what movie can you watch on repeat and never get tired of? Any, any Batman movie, put any of them on. Question number seven, name one pet peeve of yours. Probably like, just not putting things away. I'm very organized. My wrestling, my, my like my wrestling bag, everything has its place, you know? And if it's not back in its place, that's how I know something's missing, right? Yes, yes. The easiest way to keep track of your stuff is to just put it back, right? Well said. Question number eight, name a celebrity you'd like to meet someday. A celebrity I'd like to meet, um, probably The Rock, right? Good one. The Rock or Arnold Schwarzenegger, definitely. Question nine, last movie or TV show you watched? Uh, I watched 
Game of Thrones last night. Uh, I never, I didn't watch it in its heyday. Um, and my girlfriend really wanted me to watch it with her, so. Perfect. Last question, question number 10. Favorite or most used app on your phone? I don't know, maybe, maybe just text messages, really. But I, I, I <laughs> I'm I surprised respond. it's not like a social media, like no, Instagram no, no, no. or Twitter. DDP yoga, for sure. That's probably the most used. <laughs> I'm Perfect. A, I, I use DDP yoga all the time. Perfect. Awesome. Ace, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with me. It was so much to get to know you a little bit better. So much fun to get to know you. Guys, do not miss Rebellion April 25th. Ace Austin, thank you so much for chatting with me, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.